Uh, in the first few years, you're refereeing in the Territory days and the NWA days, Florida, Mid Atlantic, and wherever else you appeared yes. in. Um, was there any match that sticks out for one reason or another where it just went completely off the rails? Either somebody refused to do the pre agreed finish or it just all went to hell? Well, there was some of that, but Dusty Rhodes was the booker. I went through a lot of bookers in the in the 10 years that I worked for Florida Championship Wrestling. I went through so many bookers, you know, uh, Wahoo McDaniel, Dory Fuck, uh, Jay, uh, Dusty, and so on. And um, Dusty had such a well-oiled machine. There wasn't a lot of controversy about the finishes or... Uh, we were selling out wherever we went. Business was really good. So there wasn't a lot of that uh, uh, backlash. And one wrestler didn't want to do it. But once in a while, there was. Um, I remember there was a, I'm trying to remember his name. And he was in the main event with Dusty. And the finish was uh, something that didn't go exactly like Dusty had planned it. And Dusty was furious. He was mad because it fucked up the finish. And the people didn't know it, but we knew it. You know, we're trying to do a program because we're going to continue working with this guy for several weeks. Uh, so Dusty said, hey, wh what happened? Did you give him the proper finish? I said, yes. He said, I'm either going to fire you or I'm going to fire. Oh, it was Dale Lewis. Dale Lewis. I uh, said, oh, I'm going to fire Lewis. I said, Dusty, I can give you the finish backwards. I was very good at what I did. And he knew that. So he fired the guy uh, for fucking up the finish. So, you know, little things like that. And that was very unusual, very unusual, because we were a well-oiled machine back in the day. And I mean, it was like A, B, and C. We did it fantastic. And I was a big part of that. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about Dusty Rhodes as far as a book. And now he's got his detractors. Maybe he went to the well one too many times with some funny finishes and everything. But as a whole creative force, uh, what did you think of Dusty uh, with the pencil? I thought he was genius. I thought he was ahead of his time because you remember the era of like Jack Briscoe and Dory Funk, those days were winding up. I came in on the tail end of all those guys the end of their careers, you know, they were finishing up their careers after 30 years on the road. You know, I got to work with Bobo Brazil was had a couple more years left and, and, uh, uh, Eddie Graham and, and so on. Uh, so what was the question? It was, uh, Dusty Rhodes as a creative force. And, oh, oh yeah. So he was, he was ahead of his time. So at the end of that era, Dusty was part of the new era and, and uh, the Barry Windhams and the Mike Rotundos and Jake Roberts, before they were Jake the Snake Roberts, and all, it, it, you know, we're on a learning curve. And Dusty was so creative. He was a genius. And he knew the business like the back of his hand and everybody respected him. And, and he, did, he was just fantastic. Dusty was fantastic. He was ahead of his time. He was a great, remember, he was working with 40 guys and have the respect for 40 guys every week and nobody questioned him. And he came up with great angles and, and things with Kevin Sullivan, the devil, and Bob Roop and all those guys. And uh, the Snake Man, uh, Purple Haze, which was Mark oh, Lewis. Yeah. yeah, it was one of my favorite people. And King Curtis and all these guys. So he was very creative. And because the people were, it was a new generation for the wrestling fans. And they, you know, they want to see something new. So Dusty came up with all this great stuff, man. Dusty, and I asked Dusty, as I told Dusty one time after maybe a couple of years with him, I was working with Dusty, I mean, so close every week, every night. You know, we were working seven days a week going to the same town. So I'd be Dusty's right-hand man because the uh heels and the baby faces wouldn't get dressed in the same dressing room they would be across from each other they were protecting the business so you'd now, be messaging back and forth get, wouldn't you yeah so i was a guy going back and forth carrying all the finishes that's why my mind was so good for learning from dusty mm. so after a couple of years i told that my father had passed away and i said to dusty i said dusty i wish you were my father i love him so much you know and he treated me like a son he said i am your father I am your father. Uh, 
So that brought us closer together. And I, I love Dusty. If it wasn't for Dusty, we probably wouldn't be talking right now. 